Do you have a penny from 1974 or a nickel, a quarter, a dime? We're going to be looking at coins from 1974 that are worth a lot more than their face values. So welcome back to Couch Collectibles. Hope you guys are having an awesome day as always. If you guys are new, feel free to check out all the other coin videos here on the channel. And as always, let's just hop right into it. All right, starting off first with a 1974 Jefferson nickel. If we look here around the rim of the coin, you can see that it kind of gives that image that the coin has been stretched out a little bit and that is a result of a broad strike so this coin has been broad struck it's a mint error it is graded and authenticated by PCGS at a mint state 64 but the coin only sold for around $25 at auction now it's obviously a lot more money than five cents but you got to consider the fact that you have to pay to have the coin graded so you're not really making a huge profit on that one but we will look at some more valuable ones here as we go now here's a 1974 S mint mark Lincoln cent. This one, same type of mint error. It's uh, been broad struck. You'll see that around the rim of the coin. Some can be very extreme, some not so extreme. The more extreme examples, of course, can sell for more money. And the higher the grade, the better the condition of the coin. Those can also sell for more money as well. So this is graded by NGC at a mint state 64. This coin sold for over $75. Now here's one of my favorite coins of this video, 1974 quarter that sold for over $375. This coin has been double struck and flipped over in collar. So you'll see the design from the reverse design, the eagle design here on the front of the coin of the Washington quarter, the obverse of the quarter, right? So this is a very, very nice double strike here, graded by PCGS at a mint state 64. So always, always inspect your coins closely, over $375. If you come across something like this, you definitely want to have it graded. Now here's a 1974 D mint mark. This is a... Kennedy half dollar coin, so 50 cent coin, that has a doubled die obverse. So it looks very normal from a distance, but if you use your coin loops, your coin microscopes to uh, inspect your lettering and the uh, dates of your coins up closely, you will see doubling on this coin. So here's an example of what that doubling looks like on the 1974. You can really see it there on the lettering. I actually have one of these in my collection. This specific one here, graded by PCGS at a Mint State 64, ended up selling for around $90 at auction. I mean, hey, it's 50 cents, 90 bucks, I'll take it. Here is a 1974 Lincoln cent. This penny here has a die break on the obverse of the coin. You'll see that extra metal there on the rim of the coin covering up the word Liberty. And on the opposite side of the coin, you'll see it faded out as a result of that mint error. So uh, this coin here ended up selling for around $80 at auction. You know, you can look for die breaks that are much larger than this, much smaller than this. Of course, you know, the value depends on the coin that's taking place on, the date of the coin, uh, how many exist, you know, on, you know, a certain dated coin, uh, how large or small the die break is, also referred to as a cud, and of course the grade, the condition of the coin. So there's a lot of factors that will determine its value. Here's another example of a die break. It is on the 1974 Jefferson Nickel here on the obverse. Very, very obvious die break there. This coin only graded at an AU50, so not a high mint state grade, but still nice coin here. This coin sold for around $85 at auction. I'll take it for five cents. Here's a 1974 D mint mark Roosevelt dime graded by NGC at an AU58. This coin here looks very normal on the reverse, but here on the obverse, you'll see that it has been struck through a capped die. Now you can look for these on all kinds of different coins, pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and so on. This coin only sold for around $35 at auction, so eh, not really worth grading unless you really want to keep it in your personal collection. Uh, but yeah, you're not going to make a huge profit on that one. Now here's a 1974 Lincoln cent that had the obverse struck through a cap die as well. It's graded by NGC at a mint state 65 brown. And this coin sold for $65 at auction. You know, had this coin been graded at a red, you know, a mint state 67 red or a better grade, right, than a 65 brown, it would have sold for more money. So it all depends on the condition as well. Here's another example of a capped die taking place on a Washington quarter from 1974. And this coin is graded at a mint state 66. So a much better condition coin here. 
This quarter ended up selling at auction for over $285. Now here is a mint error taking place on the 1974 dime. It has a partial brockage here, as we can see here on the obverse of the coin, very, very obvious mint error. Uh, this coin graded by Annex at a mint state 60 ended up selling for a little over $30. Here is a 1974 Jefferson nickel once again, where the obverse half of two planchets were struck together. Uh, so if you're not familiar with what a planchet is, it is, you know, the piece of metal uh, that is cut out as a circle, right? Easiest way to explain it uh, using very simple terminology. The piece of metal that's cut out in a circle that the design is struck onto, right? So it's that little piece of metal before the design of the coin is struck onto it in order to make it a coin, right? So we see the result of this mint error here, most noticeably here on the reverse of the coin. This nickel sold for a little over $70. Here's a 1974 Eisenhower $1 coin. This coin has an indent here on the obverse of the coin, which we see there on the left side. This coin is also graded at a mint state 64, and this dollar coin ended up selling for $240. Now here's just an off-center error taking place on a 1974 Jefferson nickel. It is graded by Annex at a mint state 65. And this coin ended up selling for nearly $70 at auction. Here's an off-center 1974 penny, struck 20% off-center. Of course, the grades of these coins will uh, you know, affect the values as well. Uh, this is graded at a mint state 63 red-brown by NGC, but this coin did sell for over $185. Here's a 1974 Kennedy half dollar coin that is graded by PCGS at a mint state 64. It is a partial collar strike, so you'll see that around the rim of the coin. Very, very obvious uh, to distinguish this mint error. Uh, you know, you don't need a microscope or anything to see something like this. This coin sold for a little over $60. Now here is a 1974 Lincoln cent. It is the S mint mark. It has a die adjustment strike and it also has been struck through here on the obverse of the coin. So this one's pretty obvious as well. This coin authenticated by NGC ended up selling for around $80 at auction. Now here's a 1974 half dollar coin again, where the obverse has been struck through a uh, fragment, the reading fragment, and you can actually see the design of the reading there, the rippled edge going through Kennedy's face there. This coin ended up selling for $480 at auction. And then here is a Washington quarter from 1974 that was struck on an underweight planchet. So it weighs a lot less than uh, your typical 1974 quarter is supposed to weigh. This weighs 4.7 grams. By the way, in my book, A Guide to Coin Hunting, uh, you can get that on couchcollectibles.com. I do have the weights of coins, uh, the dates to look for, and mint errors to look for, list of each one, pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and so on. In that book, couchcollectibles.com, so feel free to go pick up a copy. It is $12.99. I wish I could make it cheaper, but that is literally as cheap as I could make it in order to you know, gain a, a, a small profit from the book. Uh, I made it literally as cheap as I could. Like I didn't want to make it $17 or $18.99. So uh, it's going to be at $12.99 forever. It will never be on sale. Unless you want the digital copy, you can get that for $5 and download it straight to your phone. All right, so this coin ended up selling for $70 at auction, all because of that mint error. You know, it's only graded at an AU53. So again, had it been a high mint state grade, the coin could have sold for more money. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Feel free to check out those videos to the left of me. And until tomorrow, I'll see you guys in the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles, and this is where I disappear.